Carrie. Hi. Thank you for making time for me. Yes. I've stolen you away from a ton of sessions here at the Asta Field Crop Seed Convention. And I know you are in back-to-back -back meetings, but I yes. really appreciate you making uh, a couple minutes. I'm glad to do it, yeah. Perfect. Thanks. Um, now, your bioscience is, is obviously making waves in the biologicals market. So I wanted to catch up with you, pick your brain on uh, where biologicals are, where they're going. And it's obviously a very exciting yeah. piece of the egg industry and growing piece of the industry. It is. Uh, it now is. I know you're en route to a meeting, so yeah. let's let's stroll yeah. and we'll get you there, but let yeah. me just pick your brain yeah. as we go. Yeah. Um, so the, we do a lot of chatting at Seed World about origin stories, kind yeah. of the heart of what makes a company tick. Yeah. So let me start there before we jump into where things are going with biologicals. Yeah. What makes your company tick? Yeah, I mean, our we started with 30 years worth of work from the University of Minnesota. Our founder, Dr. Linda Kinkle, um, spent decades of her career really digging into what makes microbes do great things for plants. And her whole goal was, how do I change how we grow crops to use these microbes in an effective way? And she looked at the industry and said, no one's thinking about how these products work in the way that is needed. She's a micro um, expert. Mm -hmm. And so really the, the origin story for Yord is an amazing person who said, I can make a difference, but I have to leave academia to do it. And so she founded the company based on that. I joined Yord because I saw the promise of the technology. Right. I spent 14 years at Corteva before coming to Yord and I saw we can make biologicals do amazing things if we design them right. And so really the founding and what makes our company tick is if we're honest with ourselves as an ag industry, we took a chemistry playbook and tried to apply it to living things, microbes. Right. And that doesn't really work because that's not how the microbes work. They're living things that have distinct nutritional needs. They interact in communities and partnerships. And so leveraging that knowledge that these are living things, right. that is what we are here to do for the industry. And so that's really what makes us tick is to really change how we design these products from the ground up. So you come from a strong background, many de decades of research and biologicals as a whole yeah. come from that kind of research. That said, we're just yes. kind of on the, right the tip beginning. of the yeah. iceberg. There's yeah. so much more ahead. So talk to me yeah. about about yeah. what are we looking at for for the near term future for biologicals, the slightly yeah. step out? Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at from an input segment perspective, it's the fastest growing segment in the mm -hmm. industry from a, a Kager perspective. So uh, I think most people recognize that. I think the tip of the iceberg comment is absolutely right. When you look at how do we actually make these products work? That's the biggest complaint right now right? Right. is that they're not quite consistent like we want them to be. And maybe they don't have the, the powerful efficacy that we had hoped that they would. Like, why does it look good here, but not over here? And I think it comes back to, we've used playbooks that worked for synthetic chemistry. That's not wrong, but it's probably not optimized. It's probably not what those, what those product types really need. And so I think that's really what you'll see is this coming together of the, the technical capabilities that we have across the industry from the data science, the genomics work, um, all of the best science we can to bring quality products forward. It's now pulling that together in the biological space. We've done it for seed and breeding. We've done it in synthetic chemistry. Now we have to bring all of those different pieces of science together, right. as well as the product development mindset. And so I think the other thing I would say is thinking about the regulatory environment, it's really challenging for synthetic chemistry right now, and it's only gonna get harder. It's true. And our industry, our farmers deserve tools as fast as we can get them here. Yeah. And I think that's where the promise is for biologicals. Is and how do we do new, that? Innovative exactly, tools. Exactly. Yep. Make them work the way they are nature designed them to. We just, through our product development processes, we have taken a different mindset and we need to think about these as living things and how you bring forward a product that is a living thing. We know how to do that in the seed industry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's huge variation in the biologicals market yep. in terms of 
I'm always hesitant to use words like snake oil, but yeah. we know that yeah. some of that exists. Yeah. And then to the, the hugely researched, proven efficacy, big trials, yeah. all of that. How how does how do companies kind of stay ahead of the curve when there's big incentive to getting products out because there's such interest right now, there's right. such a need right now? Yeah, you balancing that speed with the um, the advancements that you yeah. need to have, and I actually believe that we can do both. I do believe that's the case because of the data science and the capabilities that are out there to make quick decisions and get these products in the field as fast as possible. So you can you can do that, especially if you have a regulatory framework that's put mm -hmm. in place to help with that acceleration. So I think we will see that come to fruition more and more. But I also think that farmers, rightfully so, I grew up on a farm, so this is kind of speaking from my own experience. As a farmer, you expect products to deliver. You expect them to perform and you want them to be consistent. So you might buy some of those really fast products to the market, but you might not stick with them. Right. Those that will have longevity in the marketplace will be those that brought forward that new mindset and the more advanced development. So so for you, you are leading in this. You, I mean, as an individual, yeah. you're leading a, a company that is in this incredibly dynamic industry. Yeah. What's some of the, the biggest lessons that you've learned from, from? Yeah, where to start? Um, <laughs> so, right. Uh, get yourself an amazing team and empower them to go. Like that would be one of my first, and it's a lesson in all the positive because I have an amazing team that I get to work with every day. Uh, so that would be one is get a great team in place and let them go do those great things that you mm -hmm. hired them to do. But on top of that, it's um, find the right partners. I think I've watched from a startup perspective in the venture capital space, it can get really complicated if you have groups that don't quite understand what it takes to be successful in this industry. It's a balance of speed and patience. Mm -hmm. And so having the right partners at the table if they're investors, but also partners to develop technology and bring them to farmers. It takes kind of bringing together everyone's expertise to do that well. And what we view our strength at Yord is really making sure we can help companies develop in that first stage of how do you select the right, the right microbes? How do you right. select the right product at the top of the funnel, and then let our partners be great at what they're great at, which is um, end stage development, product launch, support in the channel. They have the infrastructure to do that. And so matching, like marrying up the, the strengths, I right. think is the other thing. So when you think about partnerships, it's, it's having the right mindset about speed and patience balance, but it's also who, who's strong at what and how yeah. do you match those things up? So I think those are some of my bigger lessons right now, because it is, it's a it's a dynamic environment. It's going to continue to be that for a while. Um, so stay true to what you're good at, but find the partners that balance what you need to grow into. And we're hearing that right across the seed industry that yeah. collaboration yeah. is huge. Yep. You it used to be doable to be a company and feel like you were sort of the be all and end all and a standalone. Right. But today it is all about the connections you've got, yep. the the resources that you can yeah. leverage, exactly. and you don't have to have it all yeah. in house. It's, it's yeah, it's. It, I think it would be strange to think that you could be great at every, every single piece. piece of that, or and across all technology types. Right, too, right? absolutely. Like, yeah, it's a it's a great industry that we work in, and it's it's at the same time small and tight knit. So let's yeah. leverage that, right? Yep. We know each other. We know how to work well together. Let's do that. Okay, so leveraging those partnerships, building on on what's already happening. Where are we going? So yeah. both for Yord, yeah. but also for the biologicals as a whole, what are we seeing five years from now? Yeah, I think you'll see um, really advanced technologies getting into the marketplace in the next five years. And I mean, um, that's across the different product categories. So everything from a biological pesticide to biostimulants and, and the biofertilizer space in particular. And as you think of balancing um, the needs that farmers have in an, in an environment like we have, mm -hmm. um, all of those input spaces are in need of new technologies that help to manage your fertilizer inputs, that help to come up with novel modes of action for diseases and insect pests that continue to evolve and change as we see changing climate patterns and other things like that. So 
you know, farmers' needs will continue to evolve and we need to be able to be responsive in a fast way. And I think mm -hmm. that's partly where you'll see the biological space growing. For Yord specifically, we have some really wonderful partners that we're working with. And I, I will tell you, you will see some commercial product launches in the next five years that are going to be great. And I can't wait for my family to get to use them on our farm, but also for other farmers to have access to that technology. I, I love that the heart, the starting place is grassroots. Yep. It's really what's happening on the farm and it's making an impact yep. for your family, for, yeah. for all of the families. This is why we do what we do, right? In yeah. the seed industry, it's it's a passion that we all have, right? Is yeah. helping serve our growers. And uh, I, I, there's not another industry I would want to work in. This is the one. <laughs> yeah. um, you were the, on the cover of our September, <laughs> our September edition. It was a great cover. Uh, I have a feeling that you are already a very well-known name in the industry. Oh, thank you. But I think it's just going to be more and more. There is so much opportunity in biologicals. Yeah. We are excited to uh, watch yes. watch biological soar. Yeah, yeah. Happy to be here. Ast is a great um, environment for us to be participating in. This is one of this is actually the first industry association we joined. Okay. When we start when we launched Yord and tried to decide where do we fit in different industry organizations, I knew Asta was the right first step for us because of that close network, mm -hmm. the partnerships, and really all driving toward how do we make this industry grow, quite literally. And it's, it's events like this where yeah. where we can literally catch you on the fly yeah. like we did <laughs> en route to your next yes. meeting yes. To, to have the conversations that, that really shape the next step of the industry. Yeah. Super um, exciting. Thank you so much for You're making welcome. time. You're really, welcome. really appreciate it. Off you go to your next yes. meeting. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.